can't emphasize enough. I think long term, long -term Tesla Energy will be roughly the same size as Tesla Automotive. I mean, the energy business collectively is bigger than the automotive business. So you say, like, well, how big is the energy sector? Bigger than automotive. The mission of Tesla is to accelerate sustainable energy. So I can't emphasize enough the battery and solar will both be enormous. What if I told you that there was a major sector of Tesla's business that is about to soar and that it's largely being ignored by almost every single analyst and retail investor that follows Tesla stock? That sector is, of course, Tesla energy. I see so many Tesla investors out there, myself included, we closely follow the automotive side of the business and most analysts are looking only at production and delivery expectations for the next five to 10 years. And then we have things like full self-driving and robo taxis and Tesla bot, which most analysts are not gonna put in their valuations at all because they're not real yet. And most Tesla retail investors are excited for, but can't really wrap their heads around the value either. And then we have this thing called Tesla Energy, which has pretty much been forgotten about over recent years. And understandably so, it's been such a stagnant part of Tesla's business for so long that it feels like it's this ignored step sibling that no one wants to talk about anymore. But as we heard Elon point out in the opening, Tesla Energy is still expected to one day match or exceed the auto business. And we know from looking at some of the largest companies in the world that the energy opportunity is massive. And in today's video, I'm going to lay out why that time for Tesla Energy is right now. Tesla Energy has already started its exponential growth curve this past quarter, and it's on pace to match the automotive side in the years to come. Its impact on Tesla's business and Tesla stock will become undeniable starting in 2023 and beyond. And in order to understand why energy is set to explode, we first have to understand why it's been stagnant for so long. We'll prioritize batteries for vehicles, but then use any excess cells that we have in the Powerwall and Megapack. Over time, we think the demand for stationary storage is gonna be at least as high as the demand for vehicles. You know, some of our suppliers have just asked me outright, are, are we gonna just put them out of business or something? I'm like, not at all. As many cells as you wanna make and supply to us, at an affordable price, we will buy. No limit. It's basically telling suppliers literally as much as you can make, we'll take. Tesla has made it very clear over recent years that they have prioritized batteries, chips, and other material constraints for their cars. Tesla and their suppliers have both been hit really hard by COVID lockdowns in China over the last couple of years. And Tesla has been very open and honest about the struggles that they've had ramping up the 4680 battery cells. But all of that seems to be coming to an end at the same time. Finally, this September, Tesla executive Martin Vieca said at the Goldman Sachs Tech Conference that this is the first time in the history of Tesla that they have all the batteries and materials they need for both the automotive side and the energy side. His exact quote was, for the first time I can remember, we can access all the supply we need for both businesses. We also heard a ton of amazing nuggets on the Q3 earnings call from Elon, Zach, and others from Tesla about the positive results and outlook on the energy side and the exponential progress of the 4680 batteries. Here are some of my favorite nuggets that I cut and edited from that call. We actually see the energy storage business, stationary storage, growing more like 150 to 200% a year, faster than cars by a lot. On energy profitability, we achieved our strongest gross profit yet for this business, driven primarily by record volumes of our Megapack and Firewall products. In our shell, 4680 ramp is growing exponentially. Our production of 4680 cells has tripled in Q3 compared to the previous quarter. We are finally gaining rapid traction on the 4680 cell. We also have our second generation of manufacturing equipment for 4680 cells in Texas, which continues to show great progress along with our original pilot line three months. Yeah, ramp is going well, as Elon said. Total output is up 3x quarter over quarter, and production is tracking to exceed 1,000 car sets per week. Our focus is now shifting from 100% ramp to cost and further expanding production capacity in North America. We view the passing of the inflation reduction act as a significant boost towards accelerating our mission, while also scaling the battery supply chain at large in the United States. We believe Tesla is very well positioned to capture a significant share of that for solar storage and also electric vehicles. Just at a high level, I'd say uh, we do expect to fully meet the IRA's requirements. Our goal is to strive towards 1,000 gigawatt hours a year of annualized production in the United States alone. 
we're going to go basically pedal to the metal as fast as humanly possible to get to 1,000 gigawatt hours a year of production in the U.S. vertically integrated. So in a nutshell, Tesla just told us that they hit record revenue and profitability for their energy sector. They expect to grow the energy business by 150 to 200 percent per year. They've recently tripled their 4680 battery production in just three months, and the Inflation Reduction Act will be a massive accelerator to their business and their suppliers' businesses, and that they expect to qualify for most or all of the IRA credits. Elon also threw out this insane number of 1,000 gigawatt hours of U.S. production alone, and we're going to dive into what all of those numbers mean. And if that wasn't enough, we have a brand new mega factory that just opened up in California that most analysts are treating as if it didn't even exist. This new mega factory in Lathrop, California was just featured on Tesla's Instagram page and is open and operational today. This factory is almost exclusively dedicated to manufacturing Tesla's mega packs, and they're already producing over 25 mega packs per day with an expected annual output of 10,000 mega packs per year. So let's break down in detail all these numbers and stats that we've just heard and see how this can truly benefit Tesla from the financial side. Here are some of the numbers that we know so far. So in this chart that you see on screen, we can see the history of Tesla's energy side of the business from Q1 of 2019 all the way up to last quarter, Q3 of 2022. And then in blue here, I have my projections for where the energy side of the business could go in the coming quarters and years. And so we have to look at the history to really understand where Tesla's business has been. Solar has had really very little impact on Tesla's business, going from as little as 29 or 35 megawatt hours of solar deployed all the way up to as much as 100, but we don't really see any type of smooth trend there. And then when it comes to storage, we've had points in this business where it looks like it's going to improve and take off, like in Q4 of 2020, we had 1,584 megawatt hours of storage deployed, but then we saw in Q1 of 2022, only a few quarters ago, where that dropped down to almost half that 846 megawatt hours of storage deployed. And we can see the same thing when we look at the revenue side of the business, where we have these fluctuations in the energy generation and storage revenue, and then same with the profitability, where some of our most profitable quarters were back in Q3 of 2019. And it wasn't until recently where we started to see two consistent quarters averaging over $100 million in profit from the energy side of the business. And so when you look at Q3 of 2022, you see that clear record that Zach was talking about in the Q3 earnings call. Tesla was able to clear $1 billion in energy revenue for the first time, and it was the first time they passed $100 million in profit from that side of the business. The other important thing that we heard in that earnings call was Elon saying that they expect the energy side of the business to grow at about 150 to 200% annually and outpace the growth of the automotive side of the business. And so I wanted to look at what would that come out to if we start to map this out over the coming quarters. If we look at the higher end of what Elon brought to the table, 200% annual growth each year, what that means is that the business is tripling every single year. And that comes out to about 31 to 32% of growth each quarter. So I wanted to take a flat rate 30% per quarter, which comes out to about 186% annual increase. If we do that, we go from 1.1 billion of energy revenue last quarter to 1.4 billion next quarter, 1.8 in Q1 of 2023, 2.4 in Q2 of 2023, and then we are tripling that up to 3.1 billion in Q3 of 2023. That is also the same quarter that we could expect to see potentially profits of over a billion dollars from the energy side of the business. And just to give you my rough math on this, I have the top line energy growing at 30% per quarter, but I have the bottom line growing at about 20% per quarter. And the reason I feel confident about that, besides the fact that you're going to see operating leverage from this side of the business, from that new mega factory in California, but you have the IRA tax credits 
that for the first time ever, you're gonna see a 30% tax credit on the storage side of the business. That is massive for this side of the business because previously that tax credit was zero for storage. So that's one way to look at the growth of the energy side of the business if we take Elon's word that they're gonna grow at 150 to 200% per year. The other way that I wanna look at it is what is the capacity of this new Lathrop facility in California and what can we expect from this ramp? We already know that they're producing 25 megapacks per day and their goal is to produce 10,000 megapacks per year, which comes out to 40 gigawatt hours of production from this facility. And we also know that this side of the business is so much simpler when it comes to manufacturing compared to the automotive side. They were able to ramp up this factory from groundbreaking in September of last year to already producing at a consistent amount just a year later. When you look at that compared to Austin and Berlin, Austin being the best comparison because it's also in the US, this facility is still well outpacing Austin. And so this tells me that they're able to ramp up these mega factories way faster than they could ramp up an automotive facility. So I think it's highly likely that they can get to this 10,000 mega pack annual number sooner rather than later, probably within the next 12 to 18 months. If they do that, we can look at the pricing for a mega pack today. It's over $2 million for their cheapest mega pack today. And so if we multiply $2.1 million by 10,000 mega packs per year, that comes out to $21.1 billion in revenue just from mega packs, just from the new California facility. And if we add that to what they were already producing prior to this facility opening, which is about an additional 2.8 billion per year, we're looking at about 24 billion in revenue from battery storage and specifically mega packs per year in the near future. And if we go back to our chart, we can see that last quarter was 1.1 billion in revenue from energy. And so we're going from about 4.4, 4.5 billion in annual revenue to as much as 24 billion in the next probably 12 to 24 months. The other way that I would encourage you to look at this is what is the tax incentive implications on the automotive side with the new IRA EV tax credit versus the tax credit that is now in place in the battery storage side. And what is at stake in terms of Tesla's pricing power and profitability that they could potentially gain from the new Inflation Reduction Act in battery storage and how does that compare to the automotive side? And so on the automotive side, it looks like Tesla is on track to sell about 550,000 Model 3 and Model Y in the US for 2023. And if we assume that they can get the entire $7,500 EV tax credit, that comes out to $4.1 billion in potential incentives for 2023 for the automotive side of the business. And I know some of you will say, well, that $4.1 billion doesn't all go to Tesla. And I agree with you, but it is something important that gives Tesla pricing power to be able to play with. And maybe they only get two or three billion of that amount because they raise prices. But just for this exercise, let's look at that $4.1 billion and see how it compares to the battery storage side. And so if we look at that $24 billion of annual revenue, that goal number that we found from the 10,000 megapacks annually at the new California facility, plus the roughly $2.8 billion of current capacity, and then we multiply that by a 30% tax credit that again was not in place before, but is in place now for battery storage, that comes out to $7.2 billion in potential tax credits and incentives that Tesla never had before. And that's almost double the automotive side of the business, which we already felt like that was a massive number at 4.1 billion. And so this really puts into perspective the impact that the IRA is going to have on this side of the business and this side of the business has a massive backlog, and so demand has already not been an issue, but this allows Tesla to have pricing power and to continue to increase their prices over the coming years, which they've already been doing over previous years. There was actually an article earlier this year that mentioned that the price for Tesla Megapacks had gone up from about $10 million for 10 Megapacks, so about a million dollars per Megapack, to about $16 million for those same 10 mega packs, so about 1.6 per mega pack, to now it's over $21 million for those same 10 mega packs. And so we've seen the price of Tesla mega pack double in less than a two year period, and this new IRA credit is gonna allow them to continue to increase prices and keep it as a no brainer for the end consumer. 
So we've looked at the potential impact of 150 to 200 percent growth each year. We've looked at the impact of this new California facility and what it could provide. And we've looked at the impact of the IRA tax credit. But the last thing I want to look at is this crazy number that Elon threw out there, which is a thousand gigawatt hours annually of production and that they are sprinting as a business to be able to get to this number in U.S. production alone. And so let's say that 500 gigawatt hours is for cars and 500 gigawatt hours is for energy. There's a 50-50 split and both sides of the business are essentially equal in terms of energy. This enables the automotive side of the business to make between 13 and 14 million cars, which is plenty of cars. They've talked about 20 million being this ultimate goal. So this 500 gigawatt hour would definitely be plenty of batteries to suffice for all the car production they would need in the U.S. whenever they hit this. So if we assume they're gonna have at least 500 gigawatt hours of batteries just for the energy side of the business, and we keep it simple by taking this and putting it into mega packs, we can do some rough math and figure out what kind of revenue could this generate. And so this new California facility that is capable of producing 10,000 mega packs, we know that comes out to 40 gigawatt hours of energy. So if Tesla's goal is to create 500 gigawatt hours of energy, if we divide that by 40, that comes out to 12 and a half times the California facility. And if we multiply 10,000 times 12 and a half, we get 125,000 mega packs. We know that one mega pack is about $2.1 million. And so 125,000 mega packs is potentially $262.5 billion in revenue. And if you think about what that 30% IRA tax credit looks like on this amount, it's nutty. As you guys can see, these numbers get pretty insane really quickly. And I think the thing that's most interesting about the energy side of the business is when it comes to the manufacturing, it really seems to be so much less complex than the automotive side. And the speed at which they were able to throw up this factory in California and get it up to 25 mega packs per day and ramping really fast. And a place like Austin has so much of their time and attention and focus and has been relatively slow by comparison. It really says to me that this energy side of the business is going to explode and potentially Elon's statement of 150 to 200 percent growth per year could be undershooting this side of the business. So it's time to start paying attention to this part of Tesla's business. And if you're a Tesla stockholder that is feeling unsure at this time because the stock price is down, just realize that most analysts do not even have this as part of their models. They are simply looking at production and deliveries and the cost of the vehicles and the profit margin on those vehicles. And for things like energy and especially FSD and Tesla bot, those things aren't even a part of the business. But we know bot and robo taxis are really the long-term call option on Tesla. The short term upside really is in this energy business and I expect it to get to a place where analysts will not be able to ignore it starting in 2023. So hopefully this video was helpful. If you guys enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, share with a friend and we'll see you in the next one.